In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. I'm sure this week you have seen in various news reports the celebration of John Paul II's 25 years. And uh, I just feel that it is my duty to point out to you the true side of his 25 years of attempting to be the Pope, and uh, so that you do not lose sight of what this man is and what he has done to the Catholic Church. It is very easy to be taken in by the strong elements of propaganda in the news and to have your mind be led into some thought that this is a great man. They are praising him for the sole reason that he has abandoned the Catholic faith. They praise him for his ecumenism. They praise him for getting everyone together uh, and for other purely humanistic motives. They never praise him for upholding the Catholic faith. In fact, if ever he does anything that smacks of upholding the Catholic faith, he is immediately criticized by these same people. But I just want to review his 25 years briefly and have you consider the state of the church in these past 25 years. Let us look at his heretical statements and practices, the kissing of the Koran publicly and solemnly, a book which denies the divinity of Christ and the fact that he died on the cross the removal of a crucifix from an altar and the replacing it with a golden statue of Buddha and the insensation of the said statue by Buddhist monks, which act he permitted under his own eyes in Assisi in 1986. The praise of voodoo, which he himself did, voodoo, which is the worship of demons and the worship of snakes. The praise of Martin Luther, the man who said that our Lord Jesus Christ committed adultery three times, calling him a deeply spiritual man. The praise for the joint declaration on justification with the Lutherans, the document signed with this heretical sect which blatantly denies the teaching of the Council of Trent on justification, the declaring that non-Catholic religions are means of salvation, which is directly contrary to the Catholic dogma that the Catholic Church, that outside the Catholic Church there is no salvation. And this he said in an official document where he said that children should be taught that non-Catholic religions are means of salvation the promulgation of the ecumenical directory which permits abominable acts of communication in sacred things with heretics and schismatics. It permits, for example, Catholics to go before Lutheran ministers and be married. And it permits the giving of Holy Communion to non-Catholics. Permitting that Zoroastrian priests worship fire at Assisi. This was about two years ago. This worship of fire is the oldest form of idolatry. And it is the very reason why God called Abraham out of Ur in the Old Testament in order to found upon him the true faith, to remove him from that very idolatry, and he purposely permitted that idolatry to be done at Assisi the beatification of Mother Teresa, who did not strive to convert Hindus to the faith, but rather encouraged them to be good Hindus. And that's recorded in Time magazine. The promulgation of the document concerning communion, in which heretical and schismatical sects are referred to as particular churches, which belong to the Church of Christ, and in which, to quote, all the essential elements of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church of the creed are found. 
which is directly contrary to the teaching of the church, the creed itself, which is that we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and the church has always understood that to mean the Roman Catholic Church and no other church. And so he has destroyed the very belief that we have concerning the nature of the church itself. The approval as valid of a mass of Nestorian heretics in Iraq with no words of consecration, with the permission to Chaldean Catholics that in case of necessity they attend this heretical and schismatic service in order to fulfill their Sunday obligation. Imagine a Mass with no words of consecration saying that there is no fire in hell, calling Jews our big brothers in the faith and the approval of a Vatican document which states that the Jews' expectation of the Messiah is not in vain and permitting American bishops to say that we should not attempt to convert the Jews because they have their own covenant with God which is a blasphemy saying that Muslims, Christians and Jews all worship the same God even though they, Jews and Muslims, deny that our Lord Jesus Christ is God. Drinking a ritual potion, part of a pagan ceremony in the Fiji Islands, permitting himself to be marked by the sign of Shiva, the cow dung symbol on the forehead. Shiva, who is the Hindu god of destruction, permitting innumerable times that heretics and schismatics perform their rites in Catholic churches and permitting them to give blessings to the congregation. People who are no more priests in certain cases than your mailman declaring that non-Catholic religions have apostolic missions, some mission from God descending from the apostles to themselves, even though they are schismatics and heretics. The promulgation of the new code of canon law, which contains the Vatican II heresy concerning the church and which approves of the sacrilege of giving Holy Communion to non-Catholics, and of the mortal sin that Catholics actively participate in the worship of non-Catholics. Saying in a Lutheran church in Rome that the miracles of Christ do not prove his messianic dignity, which is directly contrary to the teaching of the Vatican Council in 1870. Repeated approval of the heresies of Vatican II particularly that concerning the church and that concerning religious liberty. The use of a bare-breasted 18-year-old American college female student to read the epistle in a mass in New Guinea. The giving of the pectoral cross to Anglican bishops and permitting Cardinal Caspar to tell them that apostolice cure must be reevaluated, and let me explain that. Apostolice cure was the document of Leo the Thirteenth in 1899, whereby he said that Anglican orders are invalid, and that this question can never be brought up again. That this is the final decision concerning it. That they are null and void. That the Anglican bishops and priests are merely laymen. They have no valid orders like the Greek Orthodox do, but they are merely lay people. And this Voitiwa has given them, only in the beginning of this month, pectoral crosses. The pectoral cross is a sign 
of a mission as a bishop. When you are consecrated a bishop, part of the ceremony is to hand over to the bishop and to place on him the pectoral cross. And this is the same pectoral cross that he gave to the Catholic bishops on the occasion of his 25 years. And at the same time, during the early part of this month, he permitted a ceremony in the church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva in Rome, whereby a, an Anglican bishop was installed as a representative to the Holy See. And during this ceremony, the Anglican bishop gave his blessing to the people. And this is the very same church in which the rosary processions were organized by St. Pius V in 1571 for the defeat of the Turks in Lepanto. And it is the very church in which the arms, the coat of arms of St. Pius V are on the front. The very same church where under the high altar St. Catherine of Siena rests and St. Victoria on a side altar and the remains of Pope Paul IV. And this church is where Anglicans have been permitted, Anglican, an Anglican bishop who was nothing else than a, a layman running around in a costume of a bishop to give a blessing and to receive a pectoral cross as if he were something legitimate. And as well, Cardinal, Cardinal Casper said in London in August to a group of Anglican bishops that Apostolice Cure has to be reevaluated. You know what that means. That the next thing on the list is that the Anglicans will be considered valid. The first step to accepting these people. Now, understand who these Anglicans are. These are the Anglicans who just recently in the news can't figure out from their own Bibles that sodomy is a sin. They cannot open the Bible and read it and figure out that sodomy is a sin. These are the Anglicans who have women priests. And these are the people getting pectoral crosses from this heretic who inhabits the Vatican. And Cardinal Murphy O'Connor, who is in charge of relations with the Anglicans, said that this gesture of giving the pectoral cross is, as he says, in a way that's hard to define, de define means that the Catholic Church has already passed beyond the position of apostolice curae. And these things are knowingly and willingly permitted by this man who claims to be the head of Catholicism. And add to all of these things the general condition of the church. Look around at the church since Vatican II. For we must add the 25 to the 25 years of this man, the 15 years of Montini, the five years of Roncalli. Forty years. Look around. Consider the condition of the church in, in, since Vatican II, the general abandonment of orthodoxy, the fact that most Catholics use artificial birth control and believe that it is perfectly all right, and the percentages are in the 80th percentile, 80th percentile. Look at the condition of the priests. Their crimes are so unspeakable. We cannot even mention them from the pulpit. They have sunken into such dirt and filth. Consider the, the condition of the nuns, how they are for abortion, how they are feminists. They are unrecognizable as nuns. Completely destroyed with regard to their faith and with regard to their piety. Completely opposite from what they should be and what they were before the council. Consider the state of Catholic education in which heresy reigns 
whether it should be the seminaries, whether it should be the Catholic universities, whether it should be the Catholic schools, the high schools and grammar schools, the reign of heresy, all of the ecumenical acts which I just described being repeated on a local and small level in all of these institutions where immorality reigns, for example, in Catholic seminaries and in Catholic universities of the grossest form. Just think of all of that. Put that all together in your mind of what Vatican II has given us. Consider the state of the sacred liturgy. What, what Vatican II has done to the liturgy. The awful, awful things that you see if you merely go to someone's funeral or to someone's wedding. And the heretical and scandalous bishops who appointed them? Who maintains them? Who keeps them going? And those of you who have ever worked for a large company like Ford or General Motors or Chrysler, you would know that if they put out a new product that caused so much destruction as Vatican II has caused to the church, if they suffered so much economic loss, as Vatican II has caused for the church with regard to faith and morals, the people responsible for that new product would be fired. They would have to leave the company and find a new job. But we see these bishops again and again and again and again appointed to be leaders of the flock, leading the sheep into the mouths of wolves, and again they are appointed, they are praised, they go to Rome and they receive honors. And even though they have presided over these priests who have preyed upon the young people, these bishops are maintained in existence and bring down upon the church scandal upon scandal upon scandal. That is the 25 years of Wojtyla. And we may not understand why God permits this, but we do understand our Catholic duty, the Catholic duty that we received at baptism and at our confirmation, and that is to give this heretic, Wojtyla, and those whom he has appointed the full measure of Catholic resistance to heresy that the church has always shown to heretics throughout her glorious history. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.